So in the last video, we discussed a little, a little bit about unit testing and we talked a little more, more so in terms of like the analogy that we could use to describe what unit tests are like and what they're for. So basically on that end, if, you know, we use the analogy of having a washing, you know, laundry workflow application. So if that was made up of three parts, we have your laundry basket, your laundry workflow, and also your washing machine. If the main thing you want to test out was the code for your laundry workflow, then you would not want any other code or any other class to interfere with that. And you would want to make sure that the behavior that you're expecting from your laundry workflow was working as expected. So that's where you use libraries like Makito to create what they call mock objects to make sure that, you know, the code that you're testing in this case, the laundry workflow, the laundry workflow class, um, is doing what it's expected to do independently of anything of anything else. So the way we're going to build our Spring Boot project is we're going to Spring Initializer. And if you have any questions on this or you want to build this on your own, I'm going to provide a link to the you know this really easy uh, you know document. I don't bother to upload it to GitHub because I assume this is going to be. You know, it's meant to be for beginners, so if you haven't even set up your Git account, I don't want you to worry about having to, you know, learn about version control before you any, before you do any of this for yourself. And again, this is going to include all the settings you need for um, start.spring.io. So after you down after you set up these settings for your Spring application, you're gonna generate your Spring uh, project and you're gonna open that up in IntelliJ. So I'm going to go through some of the classes that we already built out here. Again, back to origin, our original example about the washing, the washing, the laundry workflow. We do already have here, we already have here, um, you know, our laundry basket, our laundry basket. So it's just going to be a data class and it's just going to take, you know, the parameters going to be closed, which, just, which is just going to be a string list. Then we're also going to have our washing machine interface, right? Now here's where, you know, we're going to call our methods, you know, load close, which also takes a, a list, which also takes us a list. Then we have add detergent and start washing. We're not going to, we're not going to bother implementing these or defining these. We just want to set them up as an interface. And then last, the main thing we want to test is our laundry workflow class. Now this laundry workflow class is going to take a washing machine object. And within this class, it's going to perform the do laundry method, which takes again, a laundry basket object, which was just a list of strings. And from there, it's going to extract the close, right? So if we go back and look at our laundry basket, you know, close, is just basically where we're going to name out our close. And from here, it's going to perform all of the, you know, methods from a washing machine. Again, load close, which just takes in the list of close at detergent and washing machine. So again, like we talked in the previous video, we have our code, we have our expectation that this is going to go as planned, but we want to make sure this is being tested individually. So if we go down to our test for our test folder in our Kotlin project, and we scroll down to here where you see run test with coverage. It's going to start running our tests. Now we don't have any for these classes that we've built. And as you can see here, right now, our coverage for laundry basket is at 0% for laundry workflow is also at 0%. And for here for washing, for washing machine, since it's just an interface, it's, um, you know, it shows it at a hundred. So again, we want to build out our test mainly focusing on this one, right? So the way we do that, we're going to do it again in our you know, our test, in our test uh, directory, you're going to right click here. It's like your Kotlin class, and we're just going to call it laundry work flow test. Cool. And because we're going to perform some testing using the Makito library and it's going to be J unit test, we do have to import uh, some of those things on here. So I'm just going to paste these real quick. And because we're doing BDD Makito as in behavior driven development, we do want to keep in mind the, I guess the flow, which is the given then and when, right? So that's, 
that's going to be kind of how we're going to map out what our test does as we build it. And again, remember, as we saw earlier on the diagram, we don't want to create actual, whenever we do our test, we're not going to create use actual data to, you know, as your project gets bigger and you and you have integrations to databases or APIs, you don't want to, you don't want to use sources to pull on those, on that actual data. You want to create mock objects, right? So this is where we're going to use Mockito just to, again, create those pretend objects. So first we want to create, uh, we want to create a mock washing machine, right? So that would be, oh, and for, even though in our laundry workflow, we only have one method that we're testing, we're just gonna, if you had, depending on the amount of methods that you had for your laundry workflow class for the class that you wanted to test, you would write those out also individually within your test. So for this, we're just gonna use the annotation add test. And again, we're just going to call this to, if you want to call it something that's human readable, you can use the tilde, that's the symbol next to the one. We're going to call this make sure. Um, do laundry works. Right, so it's going to be the name of our test. Again, mainly testing this method within our laundry workflow class. So for our class, where we're going to initiate our mock object for the washing machine. And then for this mock washing machine that we created, we want to be able to inject that into our laundry workflow class or our laundry workflow instance. All right, so we have that set up. Now, for whenever you use the Mockito library, running these tests doesn't automatically instantiate these mock objects. So if you do want to perform that each time, you do have to add this an annotation for Mockito at the at the beginning. All right. So from here, this is where we're going to start writing out the actual performance that we want to do, right? So let's look over, let's look over our laundry workflow class one more time, right? So the main method that we have here is do laundry, right? Do laundry takes a laundry basket object. It extracts the, you know, the clothes strings from that laundry basket, and then it performs these three, you know, operations on it. But the main thing on here is that when you have a laundry basket, you're gonna you're gonna expect certain a certain type of behavior, right? So the first thing here is that given we have our our variable or our value laundry basket, and this is just gonna be a laundry basket object, we're gonna give it you know a shirt and pants. It's going to be list of, okay, so that's the, you know, let's see, first thing we set up, right? We set up our laundry basket. Again, that was just a data class and we just set up two strings inside of it. Then what's the expected, what is it that happens, right? Well, when we use the, when we call the do laundry to do laundry function, you know, we're going to take this laundry 
basket item in there, right? Which already has these objects we put in it, or rather these strings. Okay, so we have a laundry basket we set up and we have a situation where we call the do laundry function on this laundry basket. Then the last part we the last part for this test is we write out what the expectation is, what the expected result is based on this object we created on these mock instances of both the washing machine and the laundry workflow. And this is where from the Mockier library you get the should annotation. Because remember for the actual for the washing machine interface, we have load close, add detergent, and start washing machine. And we do this again. It's gonna be same the same syntax we use here, but it's gonna be at close and at detergent. Right, so now we have, again, just to go over it again real quick, we have our mock instances of our washing machine injected into our laundry workflow, into our laundry workflow class instance. For BDD, we have that, you know, the given when and then, and we have a, here where we set up our laundry basket. We perform the do laundry function on this laundry basket. And then last for this test, we want to, you know, this is where you check what the expected behavior is. Now there is an option or you do have this available for Makita to assert, you know, an equal outcome or verify that, or to verify that a method has called a certain number of times. We're not gonna do that today, mainly because we didn't really implement or we didn't really write out what it was that these methods would do. But again, this is more so to get in the, you know, to become a little more clear with how these tests are written out. So again, we're gonna go to our, we're gonna go to our test folder, run with coverage. And this is where we're gonna see what the total percentage coverage that we have now based on our test for the code we've written out. All right, so we get a return, we get 100% now on laundry workflow and 100% on our laundry baskets. And on IntelliJ, you can also see that by this green bar on the side, which shows you that for the code you have written out, if it is covered through a test. And again, for an application that you build out, the bigger it gets and the more instances of refactoring that occur, the more important it's going to be that you are for me, the more important it's going to be that you have these unit tests set up ready to go for any, you know, for any type of new deployment that happens, right? And I think for, you know, I think as you start getting more, as you start working with more enterprise level technology, becoming familiar with something like Mockito is going to be really important to your career. So thank you for watching. I hope you're able to learn a little bit more about unit testing, a little bit more about Mockito, and I hope this is helpful to you in your career forward. If again, if you didn't watch the previous video where we talk a little more at a high level and kind of talk discuss the analogy that we used of the washing machine to explain unit tests, I definitely recommend you watch it. If you have any questions, anything regarding your tech career, or you're just only getting started in the tech industry, I do recommend you join my Discord. Again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.